Calorie pear, a native of East Asia, has become one of the most commonly planted landscape shade trees. Here is our Purdue Extension Forestry and Natural Resources intern, Danny Thomas, to tell you more about the calorie pear. The calorie pear was initially imported from Asia to test as a rootstock for the common pear. Calorie pear was and continues to be planted for its reddish purple hue in the fall time and its beautiful white flowers that come in early spring. Its key identifying features include the symmetrical shape of the crown, the striped gray bark, the shiny green rounded leaves with long pointed tip, and the clusters of small round fruits. One of the only noticeable drawbacks is the stench of rotting fish that is present when the tree is flowering in early spring. Another drawback of the calorie pear is its weak branching pattern, as seen here, especially in the popular Bradford pear cultivar. This causes its limbs to break under heavy ice and snow loads. This also led to the development of other calorie pear cultivars for stronger branching structure. Despite the foul smell and the weak branches, calorie pear cultivars are still being used today in many cases to replace the American elm as America's street tree of choice. While most calorie pear cultivars are sterile, they can produce viable seeds when they mix with another calorie pear cultivar. For example, a Bradford pear and another Bradford pear cannot produce viable seeds. However, a Bradford pear and a White House pear can produce viable seeds. This has allowed the calorie pear to spread from here to here in our native forests and ecosystems. In many sites, calorie pear forms thickets, like this one, that choke out native vegetation and limit wildlife habitat. Invasive calorie pear is often thorny, fast growing, and an abundant fruit producer. These fruits are readily eaten by birds, which spread the seed and start new infestations. It's holding back regeneration, the native regeneration. It's definitely physically inhibiting the oak and the hickory and the, and the other valuable species to the ecosystem. And there's a lot of budding evidence, if you will, that the, the pear ripening at about the same time that the native spice bush, especially dogwood and a lot of those other species that it um, primarily is the food source for your migrating songbirds, your new tropical migrant songbirds. There's a lot of evidence that's starting to show that they're filling up with a sugar-based substance and not building the necessary fat reserves to make it all the way down to their overwintering grounds down in, in Central America. And so they're starting to see decline in those types of species. So your scarlet tanagers, your oven birds, your red-eyed vireos, your phoebes, your wood thrush, and all those different birds that fly south, um, that th their species are declining. And there's a lot of folks that are believing that the invasives um, is a big part of that reason that their species are beginning to decline more rapidly. The full effects of calorie pear is still being studied, but one thing is clear. The calorie pear problem will not go away without proper management. So we encourage you to stop planting calorie pear and plant native alternatives such as downy service berry or the flowering dogwood. If you have any more questions, please talk to your local Purdue Cooperative Extension educator. Thank you.